Now that your Blazor application is complete, you're ready to deploy it. And there are a few options available for you. In this chapter, we'll review several deployment options for your Blazor applications, and I'll walk you through an example deployment as well. Let's launch our Blazor application. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can deploy our RPS web server-side application to Microsoft's Azure Cloud App Service. And in the next lesson, I'll show you how to do the same thing with the client-side WASM application. Now, just a bit of warning first, hosting a server-side Blazor app for the internet, even on Azure, may still have a bit more latency than you'd expect for proper operation. It's encouraged that you deploy a small proof of concept application first and test it out with a few users to see how it behaves in the real world. And this is especially true if your company is using a VPN, which adds latency on top of the already running network delay. Okay, here's our solution. And we wanna deploy this RPS web.server project to Azure. I'm going to right click on this and then find the publish option, click on that. And I'll get this dialog from Visual Studio that allows me to select where I want to publish this application. And uh, there's a few different options here, including IIS. You could publish to IIS. There's a few steps involved in that and it's a little bit more complicated. This is the service you'd probably want to use if you are doing some kind of local intranet deployment and your company forbids cloud deployments. We're gonna be deploying to Azure right now and I'm gonna select that as the option and click next. Azure App Service is what we wanna use. I'm gonna click next here and then I'll select my subscription and down here I wanna click on create a new Azure App Service. I haven't created one previously for this application, so that's why I wanna create a new one. But you could also create a new one using the Azure portal and then just find it here in your deployment dialog. Give it a name that you'd like. I'm just gonna keep it simple and give it the name RPS Web Server. Select the subscription. Again, you wanna select the resource group. You can create a brand new resource group as well, but this one is fine. And then the hosting plan that you wanna use, you can create a new one here as well. I'm just gonna leave all the defaults here and click create. This will provision a brand new app service and a hosting plan and a resource group under my subscription in Azure. And that'll take a minute or two to complete. Once that's done, you can click on finish here. Make sure you review all these details down here. And there's even a note about SignalR down here. Now, previously Azure Websites was a service that Azure offered and WebSockets was disabled by default there and therefore SignalR wouldn't work by default. So you just needed to enable that. But if you're deploying to the app service, it'll detect SignalR in your project and automatically enable that for you. Okay, so we're ready to deploy this. I'm just gonna click on the publish button here and we're off to the races. Now, of course, had this been a real production application, I would have to create a production app configuration file and select a release build if I'm going to be releasing it to production. Right here, I just wanted to demonstrate the deployment process. The other processes of creating a production build is something you have to do before you deploy to production. And once this deploys, it automatically opens up the browser for me and launches my application. There it is, rpswebserver.azurewebsites.net slash dashboard. And I can still operate my application just as I expect. I can go to the backlog page, interact with these items, and all my Telerik UI for Blazor components are working just fine here. Now, if you wanted to use a custom URL instead of the Azure Websites URL, you can configure that through the Azure portal. In the next lesson, let's take a look at the deployment process for client-side or WASM applications. If you found yourself in this lesson, that means you're probably interested in deploying a client-side Blazor application. And the process is pretty much the same as the server-side, but you have a few more options. You could deploy your client-side application as a static website, and you can use services like Netlify or Azure's Blob Storage for that, or even GitHub Pages. You can check out the .NET Core documentation on how to do these things. But in this lesson, I wanna to demonstrate to you how we can deploy the client-side application to Azure App Service. Here we are in the solution, and here's my web project. That's the WASM client-side project. Let's right-click on that and click on the Publish option. Visual Studio presents us with some options on how to deploy, and we're gonna select Azure as the top option here and click Next. Azure App Service is pre-selected, that's fine, that's what I wanna use. Now let's select the subscription, 
And I already have a resource group. That's the one that was provisioned for me in the last lesson when I deployed the server application. You can reuse the same resource group, but I'm gonna create a new app service to host my client side app. And I'll simplify the name of it to just be RPS Web Wasm. That's perfectly fine. And I'll click on this new resource group name, RPS Web Wasm. And I like to append RG for resource group so I don't get confused on what these resources are when I'm looking at this in the portal later on. And I can select the same hosting plan that I had before and click create. This will take just a couple minutes to provision in Azure and we'll be able to publish. Now, I just wanted to point out one other thing here. If I click back, you'll see that we selected Windows, but if you do select Linux, you have to be careful here because paths are case sensitive in Linux. And whenever you reference your static assets in your project, you wanna make sure that uh, you're using the proper casing. When you're deploying on Windows, it doesn't really matter if you have the wrong case, but on Linux it will. So if you do deploy this to Linux and you see that some of your assets are not showing up, it could be that you didn't use the same casing as the file names when referencing those files. All right, let's hit next. This is all set up for us. And I'm gonna click finish here. And now we get a chance to review our deployment settings. If everything looks good, I'm gonna click on publish here. Once your app deploys, your default browser will automatically start up and go to the URL where the app has been deployed. It's rpswebwasm.azurewebsites.net in my case. And you can see that the first time around, since this is the client side app, we had the loading screen up for a bit. That's when the assets are being downloaded and all the libraries are being downloaded to the client, to the browser. And if I hit refresh here, that won't take as long because some of those assets were cached. And here's our functional client-side application with all our Telerik UI for Blazor components in place and working. Now, because this is just a demo application and all my data is actually running inside the browser, in a typical application, you'll most likely have an HTTP call to the back end, in which case you'd want to deploy all your API apps first and then deploy your client-side Blazor app last. One other thing you can do is you can give your web application a custom URL, and you can do that through the Azure portal. You'll find these resources now deployed in your Azure portal. All you gotta do is just log in there and assign this resource a custom domain. Congratulations, you finished this course. We've covered several basic and advanced features that you can use to build your own applications, and you'll find more as you continue learning. I'm glad you joined me on this journey to learn how to use the Telerik UI for Blazor components and features. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy using Telerik UI for Blazor.